The night of the concert had finally arrived, the air heavy with a mix of excitement and uncertainty. Rhea stood in the wings, her heart pounding in sync with the rising energy of the crowd. This was the moment she had prepared for. But instead of the usual rush of power, she felt an unfamiliar sense of vulnerability. Her voice, once an instrument of control, now carried the weight of her intentions. This time, she wasn't just a siren with a dangerous allure. She was an artist with a message. Although it had been a few months since she last graced the stage as big as this one, she was ready, but understandably nervous. A few words of encouragement from Coral was all she needed to get her head in the right space. With her head held high, she walked onto the stage. As the lights dimmed, the first notes of her new song floated into the night. Rhea felt a tremor of doubt. It was a split second. But the melody she had crafted laced with the counterpoint she and Dr. Evans had been stinkingly composed, was delicate, almost fragile in its simplicity. And it wasn't designed to enchant or to overwhelm, but to connect. That's what she was worried about. She closed her eyes and let the music guide her like it did when she first saying the counterpoint hummed beneath the surface a subtle yet insistent reminder of self-belief and authenticity the audience primed by their previous experiences with Rhea's voice leaned in as if expecting to be swept away by the familiar tide of obsession but as the song unfolded something truly remarkable happened. The counter melody wove through the crowd, not as a force of compulsion, but as an invitation. It whispered of inner strength, of the power found not in chasing after illusions, but in embracing one's true self. Rhea's voice, now a vessel of her truth, her own truth, reached out to the audience with a sincerity that was almost palpable. As she sang, she could see the change in their faces and it excited her. The glazed expressions of infatuation began to melt away, replaced by looks of contemplation and maybe self-awareness. They weren't under her spell anymore. She had given them back their voices. She tried not to smile as she continued singing. The wave of, in a wave of spontaneity, the audience began to sing along, their voices rising in harmony with Rhea's. It was as if they were waking from a long collective dream, finding themselves renewed. The auditorium, once filled with a charged, almost dangerous energy, was now awash with a different kind of power, a shared sense of empowerment and connection. Tears filled Rhea's eyes, but this time they were not tears of fear or regret. They were tears of release. As the song reached its crescendo, Rhea felt a surge of emotion she hadn't anticipated. This wasn't just a performance. It was a moment of catharsis. For her and for everyone in the crowd, the spell was broken, but in its place was something far more profound, a deep, resonant truth that echoed through the hearts of those who listened. The applause that followed was thunderous, not born of mindless adoration, but of genuine appreciation for the motion message that she shared. Just as Rhea stepped back, allowing the final notes to linger in the air, she caught sight of Coral in the crowd. There was a look on her face, one of both pride and concern, because next to her was her family. Something else, though, wasn't right. She could sense it. 
Backstage, the usual post bu post-performance buzz was tinged with an undercurrent of tension that Rhea couldn't ignore. Coral approached her, the concern more evident now than ever. Rhea, we need to talk, she said, her voice low and urgent. Before Rhea could respond, a rather large commotion near the dressing rooms drew their attention. Liam, Rhea's assistant, who had always been a bit too attentive, but she always thought that that was him doing his job perfectly fine, was engaged in a heated argument with somebody on the phone. His normally calm voice was now edged with urgency in a dangerous, dangerous tone. I told you, Liam hissed into the phone, his tone low but sharp. It's not the right time. She's not ready. We can't travel. And you know what that means. The words were heavy with threat, the air around them thick with dangerous undertones of the conversation. I don't care what your timeline is. She's performing tonight and she's reaching the turning point. You know how significant this is? Coral's eyes widened as she and Rhea moved closer. What is he talking about? What is he saying? Coral whispered her voice tight with anxiety. We need to find out. Rhea whispered back, her voice resolute. They approached Liam just as he ended the call. He turned around, and his face went pale as he saw them. But he quickly tried to mask his fear with a forced smile. Rhea! Coral! I didn't see you there. How was the show? The facade was crumbling. Rhea, still high from the performance, was not in the mood for deception. Not again. Not from somebody close to her. Liam? What's going on? Who was that on the phone? Who were you talking to? Another producer, perhaps? Liam hesitated his eyes darting nervously between the two. Coral wasn't about to let him evade the issue. You've been hiding something from us, haven't you, Liam? Who are you really working for? It's not Dr. Evans, is it? Caught in the act, Liam knew there was no point in evading the truth this time. He sighed deeply, running a hand through his greasy, disheveled hair. I'm sorry, Rhea. I never meant for it to go this far. The truth spilled out, leaving Rhea reeling. Liam wasn't just an assistant. He was a spy, working for the, a group called the Custodians to monitor Rhea's abilities. He had been feeding them information about her every move and struggle. His loyalty had never been to her, but to the organization that had been manipulating events from the shadows. A wave of cold betrayal washed over Rhea. She had trusted Liam, depended on him, and now realized it had been all a deception. The ramifications of her actions, of her power, had drawn in for forces she hadn't anticipated feeling a world she had never imagined to be a part of. But Coral did warn her once. Now again, she wished she, she, wished she listened. Coral stepped forward, her voice steadied, but filled with anger. She slapped Liam so hard that the outline of, his, of her hand could still be seen as as Kai approached. You had no right, Liam, no right to interfere with her life like this. Liam's shoulders slumped forward. I know, and I'm sorry, but you need to understand that the custodians are not the enemy like Coral's told you. They've been protecting people like Rhea for centuries. They only wanted to ensure she didn't become a threat to herself or to others or to the world in general. 
Before Rhea could respond, Coral's expression shifted to one of grim determination. If the custodians are so concerned about threats, then why were they silent about my past? They know what happened with the tornado, how I caused the cave to protect people like her from you. Liam's eyes flickered at the mix of fear and regret. They're aware of that incident, Coral. It's why they wanted to make sure Raya was contained. And at that, Raya's eyes narrowed. They've been trying to avoid situations like the one you were involved in. Raya's face, face hardened. You should have told me. You should have given me the choice. The custodians are the enemy as far as I'm concerned. They would rather control me like everybody else. Control what I can do than help others like they claim to do. So instead of dealing with people like me directly, they choose to manipulate and spy. What kind of protection is that? Raya's gaze shifted between Lord Coral and Liam the weight of the night's events pressing down on her. The euphoria of her performance, now dissipated by the stark betrayal, reality of betrayal. She had faced her own darkness, emerged stronger, but now she had to grapple with the complexity of the world around her, a world far more intricate and dangerous than she had ever imagined. And she thought she was the dangerous one. The concert had marked a pivotal turning point, not just for Rhea and her audience, but for the trajectory of her life. The impact of her actions, both good and bad, was now laid bare. As she faced Liam, the man who had been both an ally and deceiver, and Coral, who had been her, who had her own hidden struggles and was her best friend. Ray have realized that the most challenging part of her story and journey was still ahead. She would need to navigate trust, decide her path forward, and determine her own legacy that she wished to leave behind.